Yo what's up guys back again with me Matu Today we're getting into some retro grainy threshold screen print looks This is probably the next level technique when it comes to short design However I find another way to achieve the same effect that allows even more control to the result at a more efficient and easy way so we're going to get into photoshop and we're gonna work under some very specific kind of similar constraint we're going to use a very limited palette of colors and a blending of colors i will see if we can capture a little bit of that rock and roll spirit so today's tutorial is going to be about that let's go Alright, first of all, this effect works with any kind of photo. And now I got rid of the background from the school head and trimmed all the edges and we're good to go. Okay, we're going to convert the school layer to smart object. And go to image, adjustment, and levels, or you can press command L for shortcut. Here I'm going to play with slider over there to increase the contrast of the image. Okay, next, I'm going to remove all the color from this image. I'll just use hue saturation, bring the saturation all the way down. Then go to filter, noise, add noise. I don't need too much when I adding it, just want to capture a bit of detail and sharpness for this image. Okay, next up, go to filter again. Sharpen and select unsharp mask. It purposely bring out lots of detail and it can give you all these little outline and sharp details that create almost more of an illustrated looks. Of course, no specific numbers because it depends on the image that you use. So yeah, once you're happy with it, just hit OK. Alright, I think that's enough for image treatment. Next, I'm going to copy these settings to the other image. It's pretty easy. Just make sure your layer is converted to a smart object. Okay, next, click on the smart filter. And while holding the option key, your cursor icon will change like this. Then drag it to the layer you want. Automatically, all the settings we made earlier will be perfectly duplicated. You can also individually adjust these settings if you want to make some change later on. It's not committed and it's always live until you really fine tune into your own way. And then what's good about this way is it won't affect the initial settings in the first image. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the adjustment. Now I'm going to create a composition with these two images. And I'm going to speed it up this process a little bit. Stay tuned. Alright guys, next part is adding some color to the composition we've created earlier. Follow me through this process, let's get straight to the point. I select these layers, and I'm going to combine them by converting to a smart object. Now I have prepared my own color palette here. If you don't have your own color palettes, you can go to coolers.com where it can help you generate color palettes or even use the ones that are currently trending. So yeah, let's try it. So I'm going to duplicate this layer three times by pressing command G. Here we go, active one of the duplicate layers I made earlier. Go to the icon below, hit that and select threshold. 
Now for the threshold setting on the first layer. I move the threshold level slider to the left to reduce the details. I only want to get more solid area rather than the intricate details in the image. Ok, I think that's pretty much it. Then I'll clip a mask into the layer by holding down the option key. Select both of those layers. Right click and choose convert to smart object. Give a name to this new layer like dark color. Ok next, I'm going to select all the white spots in the image. Go to select. Choose color range. Move the cursor over the white area in the image. Crank up the woodiness to the maximum. Hit OK. So that's going to select every pixel that is not black. Now add the factor mask. Next, I'll add color to this layer. Go back to the small icon below. Select solid color. I move my cursor to the prepared color palette. Hit OK. Then clip a mask again. Next, we'll do the same with the next layer. Go to the small icon below. Hit that. Select threshold. Now for the threshold settings, in this part, we're going to create a transition between the dark color and the light color. I will play the threshold level slider a little bit to the middle, so I will get less solid area in the image. Then I'll clip a mask into the layer by holding down the option key. Select both of those layers, right click, and choose convert to smart object. Next go to select, choose color range. Move the cursor over the weight area in the image. Hit OK. Now add the vector mask. Give a name to this new layer like mid color. Next select solid color. And move my cursor to the prepared color palette. Hit OK. Then clip a mask again. Ok, next, we'll do the same with the next layer. It will be my light color. Go to the small icon below. Hit that. Select threshold. Now for the threshold settings, we're going to crank it up the threshold level slider. So I'll get less solid area in the image. Then I will clip a mask into that layer by holding down the option key. Select both of those layers. Right click and choose convert to smart object. Next go to select. Choose color range. Hit OK. Add the factor mask again. Give a name to this new layer like light color. Next select solid color and move my cursor to the prepared color palette hit ok then clip a mask again alright guys as you can see this effect obviously turned my photo best image become retro grainy screen print looks you can easily to change the color and experimenting with another color you like it's all up to you so you get to add up until 6 different color which work perfect if you are screen printing but that is just for example, I only want 3 color for this design. The final part is let's add a little bit of shadow and additional high clack to the edges. Just to give it some of ambience. Now using a solid color and pick that some of color, the light color below. Painting all using the eraser tools and set in soft round brush. Then at the end change the blend mode to hard light to make it show up even more.
and after that adding elements and text to the design but for now I'm gonna speed it up a little bit so stay tuned Let's apply the design to a short mockup. By the way, I am using my own mockup to display this design. You can actually download it from my store, link in description below. So basically, I just select all the other layers, press Option, Command E to merge them into a one single layer, and drop it by copy paste it into my short mockup. I'm going to use a little bit of blend if to let through some of the black in the background. And there we go, that's our apply to make it look like it's really printed on the shirt. Alright guys, so that is all for today. I hope you learned something new from this video. I'll be uploading another video later this week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes. Thanks for watching my video. See you on the next one. Peace.